Good morning. And let us pray. Precious and everlasting Father, our God and our Maker, shine through into our lives today. Fill us anew with your refreshing life and Holy Spirit. We are willing not to resist him. We are willing to yield to him, to you and to Christ our Lord and to the services and ministries and companionship of living angels. We thank you for coming to this worship to bless us. We are willing to drink of the Spirit of God. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Amen. Is there anyone who need a dream interpretation? Or anyone who requires a special prayer this morning? Okay, there's nobody. We continue where we stopped last night about the covenant. Please make sure that when you see the teachings or the ministrations, the videos, you watch them and write notes and be able to go back to those notes in order to capture the things that the Holy Spirit is sharing with you. Mama Bobo, how are you? She didn't hear me. Now let me read to you Genesis chapter 9 verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Let me go back to here. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Look at that here. Genesis chapter 9 verse 12. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. You see, there are covenants that are, that are what we will call seasonal covenants. A cyclic covenant or a covenant of a cycle. There is 
or there are covenants that are perpetual, which means they cannot be moved. It means that those, the, that kind of covenant is established. What we mean by establishing it in what I'm saying right now, when we use the word perpetual or forever, or as long as this earth remains, there are covenants that are earthly. There are covenants that are both earthly and heavenly. And here he says, there is a token to show you that it has been done. Let's see what the token is. Look at verse number 13. Genesis 9 verse 13. See the token. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Number one, when we started reading about the relationship of God and Noah, we saw that there was established between God and Noah and his family a covenant. Here, it's not just between God and Noah. Here, it is between God and the earth. I told you last night that I will begin to share with you about the token of the covenant or signs that the covenant has happened. God said to Noah, how you will know that what I've said, I'm going to do it. What I've said is what it is. And let me put it again. God said to Noah, how you are going to know that what I have said to you is the way it is. That I will no longer destroy the earth by a flood. There have been number one in Genesis 1 verse 2. There have been the ice age that came upon the earth. The moon and the sun and the stars were sealed, were recalled. The birds flew away. When I will be dealing with creation history, I will show you how and where in the Bible. You will also be able to know that there have been two gardens of Eden. There have been two gardens of Eden. There have been a garden of Eden on the earth and Lucifer used to be there. Because when you begin to look at Ezekiel and Isaiah, you begin to see where this guy ruled. And now let me share something that you have to know. The reason why a lot of people fell in life is because they have supernatural power, but they do not know how to turn it also into a physical power. Some have physical power or physical um, fame here on the earth. They do not have supernatural fame or power. Please, if you are driving, mute your phone. We don't want to hear you driving. Um... When God gives an archangel 
authority to rule, when they are anointed to rule. You see, let, let me share something that you need to know. Every angel in heaven are sent to be among us here who are given the rights to be rulers either in the supernatural or in the physical. They are ordained. They are, what I mean by ordained, they are anointed. God do anoint them. That's why Lucifer was also an anointed angel. When he said cherub here, it doesn't mean that he was a cherubim. No. He was an archangel. Because cherubim are a different breed, a different brand, a different group. Or the seraphims, he wasn't among those high class. The cherubims and the seraphims and the living creatures and the, and the different forms of, the, of seraphims and cherubims. Those are, those, are the, those are the big ones. The archangels are ruling angels. And they are anointed for that kind of work. And when you are anointed in heaven, you also participate in ruling wherever God has an interest. That's why I participate in the ministry of Archangel Gabriel. That's the ministry, that's the Archangel whose ministry I'm under. And it took me time to understand that. When, when you see yourself uh, flowing with too much revelation, you belong to that. For example, all the revelations, I'll give you another example of an, an, um, a disciple of Jesus that also comes under the ministry, under the ruling ministry of Archangel Gabriel. That is John, the one that wrote the Gospel of John and that received revelations and wrote the book of Revelations. All revelations, mostly, all revelations, mostly, whether in dream or physical encounter, come from that particular department of heaven. Everything that has to do with protection, warfare, and sometimes direction will come from the department of Michael. Everything that will have to do with giving you a breakthrough where things are difficult like the kind of like the kind of ministration that I'll be doing for people like Berlin and Alexis because they have moved into a new cycle see sometimes people don't know when they've been moved into a new cycle And some other people whose name I'm not mentioning here, including the attorney. When you've been moving to a new cycle, the, the prayer will change. Those of you who called me last night realized I didn't pray for any of you. I simply created things. I spoke things be created. It's a different place of anointing. Prayer is the longer route. It's the longer route. Let me give you an example. I want to fly to Las Vegas or to, um, or to, uh, or I want to fly to Virginia or I want to fly to New York or I want to fly to, to, to Connecticut. Okay. And the flight will take five to six hours. Okay, but for example, from here to O'Hare in Chicago, two hours. From O'Hare to LaGuardia, another two hours. And, but then, there are some times that God will want you to enjoy your being a spirit. 
So you pack your luggage. See, I'm talking to adult Christians here. This is not fairy tale anymore. After all, witches practice this. So why is it something that is baffling to Christians? So you pack your luggage and ask him to take you there. And in a second, you see yourself in New York. <laughs> oh, yeah. These are real. If you want that kind of lifestyle, you can have it. I've had people ask me, you came to such and so place and you didn't tell us. I just smile. There is a secret side of Christianity, of Judeo-Christian life. There is a secret side to Christianity. There's a secret side to it. Hallelujah. Mm. That's what we call bi-location or triple location, whereby God can split you into two different human beings, two different spirit beings with real flesh, real flesh and blood in you. Same thing. I mean, this thing is nothing. God can split you. So you, I'm here in the office working, but I am also with somebody else ministering, or I am by somebody's bedside in a hospital healing someone. God is healing someone through me. You see, God can split you into different. That's, that's why he's God. That's why God could be in heaven and is in charge of everything. Jesus could be with the Father, but his presence could be with you physically. I'm talking of physically that you can touch him. There is real flesh and blood, although glorified now. So the same thing, you will reach that place in your Christian life that you will also be able to enjoy the life of a spirit because you are a spirit being. Whereby, for I'll give you an example. I'm here in Wichita, Kansas, and I want deliverance. I want deliverance to happen to some people in the Cameroon. And so God takes me by the spirit to dig people out of where they've been buried. Some people are just walking and they do not know that they've been buried. See, these are the kind of things that baby churches, baby pastors, baby apostles and all kinds, they don't understand this area of ministry. They don't know this. I have been in a restaurant and I knew that the guy that was eating in front of me was an angel. And while I was eating, he said to me, when are you leaving for New York? He doesn't know me. I've never seen him. That's when I knew him. I smiled. I told him that I'm leaving next week. That was, I was going to New York week after that week. And I went somewhere and I was having a lunch and there was somebody sitting in front of me, my spirit and his spirit met. I knew that's an angel. He just ordinary man. And while we were eating, he, he looked at me and he said to me, when are you going to New York? <laughs> that happened some years back. And I told him it's next week. And I hurriedly finished my food and I left. It was like, you need to go. I needed a confirmation. But you see, there will be coincidences that will happen in your life when you, when you are willing to enjoy this kind of lifestyles. There will be coincidences. Because the, the desire of God is to make life easy for you. But if you doubt these things, you won't have it. You won't see it. If you don't like this kind of lifestyle, if they are frightening, then there is no use. That's the reason why you are in an airplane and the airplane have an accident and everybody crash and die and you yourself, you disappeared, you appear where you were going. <laughs> you appear where you are going. With your luggages too. 
Your luggage appears there and you appear there. And everybody else dies. People of God, this is not a strange thing. It has been an ongoing event. People are talking about you in their homes. I mean, that one, I have seen it happen to me over and over. People are in their house talking about me and suddenly I appear in their home and I'm listening to everything they are saying about me. Seriously. I'll give you one. I'm standing in front of a church. Back in Africa, I'm standing in front of a church. And I heard one of my professors, he's now dead, he was a very envious and jealous and stupid fool. He was an idiot. Even though he has a PhD. That's why I can't, I can't blame Kenneth Hagen when he calls some of the PhDs pothole diggers. See, and I'm standing in front of the church. I was coming out from seeing my senior pastor. And I'm coming out. Suddenly, something told me to stand. To just stop. So I just stopped. And I started hearing what the man was saying about me. In a split second, I was translated into his office. And I was hearing what he was saying about me. It was crazy. And God said, now you see who he is. Before you, he said one thing. When you are not there, this is what he says. I said, I got it. And since then, I became, I knew. You see, God, that is what we call the, 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 the inside, is, is the inside thing. Whereby you are able to know things ahead of time. You are able to know the people who try to follow you. Who are these people? What is this person capable of doing? This person is capable of accusing you, betraying you, lying against you, or this person is capable of doing good for you. You'll be able to know the secret behind these people. This person. That person. That's what a covenant does. Now let's switch back to our, 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 the signs of the covenant. Number one, God said, I'm going to put a rainbow, a bow. And can I share something with you? Berlin, you and I, we read Ezekiel 1 some weeks back. We read Ezekiel 1. I've also read it with Geneva, whereby you, and then we also read, uh, I think Ezekiel 13 or, or 10 whereby you are able to see the two kinds of cherubims. There are cherubims that have, um, that has the, um, there are cherubims that have the, um, the face of a human being, the, uh, in front, at the back, the face of an eagle. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the right side, the face of a lion. And on the left side, the face of an ox. They do not have cherubims. This type of cherubims do not have the the the, the leg that like the foot. I will use the foot. They have the leg of a human being, but their foot is the foot of a cow, like a cow. And cherubims do not fly. They ride on a chariot. They ride the fastest car in the planets. They ride chariots of fire. And it's possible for us, see, there are, there are things that happen in my life that I don't even know how I'm going to put it. Somebody will need to help me here. When I am ministering, whether I'm prophesying, there are three particular things that will always come to me. It will either be about the Holy Ghost, or it will be about dream, design, and destiny, or about angels. I don't know why. They can be saying one thing, 
And then angels begin to come up on the Holy Ghost on dreams. I think like, I don't know why. Maybe these are the three things that I'm supposed to focus. Alexis, is that what I'm supposed to do? You are a skill manager. Can you help me here? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm so much involved in the life of angels that I don't even know what to do with me sometimes. How is it that a creature, many of you doubt that there are no mermaids, that mermaids are in fairy books? Seriously? So, cherubims will be in fairy, will be fairy tales too. Because you read the book of Ezekiel, you see how their legs are. Even those angels who are completely like human in appearance, their legs are not real legs. They are made of gold or made of diamonds or made of bronze, glittering, shining. Even when you begin to read the real physical appearance of Jesus, the way he is today, you will say, ha, ah, ah. All this Mary gave back to Jesus doesn't make no sense anymore. How can she give back to something like this? But you are dealing with a real person. It's like when I see the real me, I'm just like, I don't get this. I don't understand this. Or when I see Annie, my daughter that lives in Norway because she's she's involved with me in what we call the warrior lifestyle. You know, that's the when when we when we when I need um, another spirit to merge in a warrior fight, she's the spirit. Another another one that has the warrior merging is Berlin. When, when, when that mage happens, Satan don't like that. He's, 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 a, he's very, very uh, creative or destructive of whoever, whatever. There are things you need to know about each person in your life, who they are. Who they are. How is it an, an angel has the, the, the foot of a, a cow with bronze on them or gold? And some of them you read how their body structure is with fine stones and all kind of stuff. People of God, if you, if you need intelligence, not just supernatural but physical intelligence, I have people who can enter into that realm and get it for you, like Alexis. This is it's very interesting. I do. Yeah, I know where you belong, girl. I know where you belong, girl. She's, Victoria is a charity worker. All of you have to know that about her. She's a charity worker. Yeah. Now let's go let's go back to what what we are saying. When you move from that kind of cherubim and you move forward in the book of Ezekiel, you will come across another kind of cherubims. This one has two faces of this is this is what I'm talking about. The face of a human being, the face of an angel. The face of a lion, the face of an ox, and there is no eagle. So you have two kinds of cherubims. The other one has the face of an eagle. This one do not. This one instead have two human faces. But when you look at the faces clearly, it's the face of a human being, the face of an angel, the face of a lion, and the face of an ox. Well, of God, I'm chipping this in for you to know the kind of religion we belong to. It's more supernatural 
the people who are with us, the people who are behind us, the people who are in front of us, are more stronger and more powerful than anything you can think of. Hallelujah. Our religion is not a religion of, of talking. It's more than that. If you look at where God sits, I'm bringing these cherubims in because we, when you see where the cherubims are, because they are the protectors of the planets, I'm not talking of planet Earth, all planets, wherever God has interest, those are the protectors of it. Including the throne where God is. So while the the, the seraphims are worshipping. The angels are protecting. And there's one thing that they are protecting. They are protecting God's business interests. And his presence. Which is just. Let me tell you. Many of you are praying to God. Oh Lord feel me. Oh Lord feel me. Oh Lord bless me. You have no idea what you are talking about. If you really mean it. When the blessing begins, you have nowhere to store it. When his power come upon you, it will paralyze you. It will cripple you forever. And when you come out of it, you will change forever. When I use the word cripple, I do not mean that he will turn you into a cripple. You will feel that something far more beyond this earth has hit you. Hallelujah. You will never be the same again. That's why I cannot wait for in most of our conferences, I mean physical conferences, that's why you need to tell people about our conference in the East Coast. After due consultation with our group, we have made a very strong decision. Our conferences are going to be free. Please listen. Registrations for our conferences is free. We began by telling you that it's going to be 150. No, it's not. It's free. We are simply obeying God. The registration for the conference that is coming up in Baltimore, Maryland is free. If you want to come from anywhere in the world, find out about the hotels in those areas. Alexis will help me to find out more hotels that we can include in there on the website. But we are not responsible for anything because the conference is free. So you will be responsible for your travels. You will be responsible for your food. We are not responsible for anything. Just show up at 12 noon till 3 o'clock to receive what God has for you. That's it. We did what we did in Las Vegas because it was a small saving. But all of our conferences from now on are going to be free. So that you have no reason to say that because you didn't have money, that's why you did not come. Because you didn't have money, that's why you didn't receive the Holy Ghost. Because you didn't have money for registration, that's why you couldn't afford a hotel room to stay. Because you don't have money, that's why you couldn't travel. It's left for you, your plan, your own uh, uh, travels, how you want to get there from any part of the East Coast, from New York to from Virginia and the Delaware, just name it, Massachusetts, um, etc. New Jersey, there are Amtrak, there are subways, there are uh, uh, Chinese buses, there are 
uh, all kind of bosses find your way to Aloft BWI. So the registration will begin today. It's free. And then come to the conference. Now I cannot wait during the conference for the spirit of joy to come in. Because many of you are not going to be healed by the word. Many of you are going to be healed by laughter. So I cannot wait. I cannot wait for the cops to call me and ask me how I've turned you into a banana that you can't stop laughing. What is wrong? And while the cop is talking to me, the same spirit catches him or her and she goes into it too. So that will be interesting to watch. Yep. Yeah, because some people will say, oh, we need to get this guy or this girl committed in a psychiatric uh, hospital. Something is wrong with their brain. And while the cop is coming to come and take you and the EMS, all of them goes into it and they start laughing and rolling on the ground. I think that will be nice to watch. People of God, these are the phenomena I want to see. I want to see the reproduction of traditional Holy Ghost movements. That's what we are after. Berlin, are you in line with me here? Yes, yes, Bishop. Okay, because you see, these, these phenomena are no longer in existence. We, we are more like more civilized, more, more shaped, more, more, more um, fashioned. We know exactly the, how much we want God to go with us and how much we do not want him to go with us. But I want to tell you something. Jesus is interested in, in the revival of Christianity along the Holy Ghost movements, once again. He's interested in the Holy Ghost movement again. Whereby you don't really know what the Holy Spirit is gonna do. You just come to the service and the Holy Spirit goes into action. He begins to direct the service. If everyone begins to laugh, then people should laugh. People getting healed, let them get healed. Miracles begin to happen, let it just happen. See, we need to get back to the way church was done in the, in the first century, in the Act of the Apostles. People lie to you, they drop dead and die. Seriously. People lie to you, they drop and die. The Holy Ghost kills them. It's there in the Bible. You curse people and they die. They drop and die immediately. You bless people. They are blessed immediately. Favor begins to come into their life. Forever. See, in the first place, God said to Noah, I will establish my covenant with you. And then after the flood, he said, I am establishing a perpetual covenant between he and the earth. And I realized that when you see the cherubims, just a little bit from where they are, you look at the north side of heaven and you will begin to see glittering fire. I mean, the spectacular, there is no spectacular on earth like it that will ever be put together. You begin to see colors and then you see a throne. And when you see behind the throne, you will see the token of the covenant between the earth and God. You will see a rainbow at the back of the throne where God sits. There's a rainbow. I mean, some people have scientific explanation for the rainbow. But if you really want the real scientific explanation for all of this, read the Bible. The Bible is 
the real science. The Bible is not just a book of a belief, blind belief. It's not a faith is not blind belief. The Bible is a book of supernatural science. Surrounding the throne is a rainbow to remind God himself that there is a sign, the sign of the covenant that God will no longer destroy the earth with water. Next one will be fire. It's a rainbow. What was the token, the sign of the covenant of saving Noah and his wife and kids and his kids and his uh, in-laws, daughter-in-laws, etc. Those in the ark. What was the sign of it? The ark itself that God asked him to build, become what saved his life. When I'll be doing a ministration on the life of Noah, you will know more about this. That when God asks you to start something or to build something, at the long run, that is what he's going to use to save your life. Many of you, God is asking you to start a business. You are delaying. God is asking you to get married. You are delaying. God is asking you to get a job. You are delaying. God is asking you to do this. You are delaying. And you have no idea that God will eventually want to use. Some of you, God is asking to stay in the marriage that you already are. And you want to get out. Or does God is asking you to get out of it and you want to stay in? What God is telling you to do is what he will use eventually to set you free and to establish you. He asks, he asks Noah, make me an ark. Make an ark. Get in it. Everybody else perish. The ark saves his life. And by the way, people, Noah's ark has been found, has been discovered. Are you aware of it? They have found Noah's ark. Just like dragons are not fake. Dragon that produces fire are not fake. Scientists have found a live dragon that is, is dead but still intact in the snow in Romania, and they brought it out. I watched it on the science channel, and they discovered that it made fire. Scientists have found mammoths, real mammoths, not, not satanic mammoths, but real mammoths. The only difference, their eyes are bigger than ours. The only difference, they eat fresh fish. Wherever you see the big sea creatures, say the whale, whales, dolphins, real, real mammoths are there. I don't know how these things are, but they have found them. In the water, in the waters of South Africa, I watched it in the Science Channel. They found him. A boy was walking to the beach, one of the beaches of the United States, when he saw this beautiful creature. From the from the west up, is a woman. From the west down, is a fish. There are two kinds of mammoths. Remember that everything God does, Satan wants to corrupt it. 
That's why real hunters, real hunters who go to hunt in the wild have to be really careful. Because sometimes you will see like a, a big python, you will want to shoot and kill it to get out of your way so that you can get the real thing you want. And you will hear the snake will tell you, don't shoot me. He will speak in a human voice or a man's voice or a woman's voice and say, do not try that. Don't shoot. If not, I'll kill you. I'm not a real snake. I'm a human being like you are. Or I'm a demon. I'm on my way to do my own business. You get on your way to do your own way. Hunters have spoken to me about this kind of things. That's why my people say, whatever the hunter sees in the night, they don't talk about it. That's what they say. It's not every animal you see that are, are, are real animals. If you don't know it, go and find out. Go and find out the meaning of lycanthropism. Lycanthropism is a human being's ability to turn into any kind of creature that he or she wants to turn into. And then back to a human being again. Werewolves are real. They are real. People can turn into wolves, into lions, into anything. It's all, it's all documented properly. Angels can turn into real human beings and turn back into angels. There is an angel changing, changing room in heaven. If you didn't know that, know it. And animals can also speak. In, in some cases, God will make your cats and dogs talk to you in a real human voice. You doubt it, go and look at the Bible. Donkeys, they talk. There is a covenant between God and this earth. And that covenant is the rainbow. It's a covenant that God will do you good. God want to preserve the earth for you. At least for now. At least for this civilization. Before the fire comes. He said, I'm going to preserve the earth. That's the reason God has not yet destroyed the earth. Because there is a token of the covenant. When God gives or makes a covenant with you, there will be what we call a token of it. What represent it? So as long as this earth remains, there will be seed time, there will be spring time, there will be harvest time, there will be this, there will be that. And what was the sign to tell you that what God said is real? It will happen and it's happening. The rainbow. What was the sign that Noah's life would be protected? The ark. And not just the ark, the world from God himself. Because many a times, obedience precedes the blessing. So the covenant was not just made with Noah because God is interested in making covenants. No. Noah did something good, then God became interested in what he did. Your ability to obey instruction and follow direction will attract God to make a covenant with you. That's how this thing works. Hmm. With Abraham, with Abraham, God said, God gave him, he said, I will establish my covenant with you and with your seed forever, which we will see sometime tonight when we begin to look at the covenant with Abraham. I'll make a covenant with you and with your seed. I will give them the land of Palestine. And that's, that's where people get it wrong. 
Why do you want to chase away all these Muslims? And people forgot that they've also come to occupy the land of Israel. God has made a promise to Abraham, this is your land. Not only the land of Israel, it's also going to give Abraham's seed, which is us, the earth, to inherit. These are real things. People of God, if you are not willing to buy land and own property, then you are violating the covenant. I'm letting you know this. If you are not willing to prosper, you are violating the covenant. Please write that down, Berlin. Any Christian that refuses to become rich is violating the laws of the covenant. Now let me see how you, you go back to those churches that tells you that poverty is a good thing. You don't really need to work so hard. Wait for government to come and feed you. You see the Chinese are not waiting for government. Jewish people are not waiting. The Indians, the people from all these countries, they come into America, to Europe, to Canada, and they start their own businesses. They're not waiting for no one. Why they understand that it's against the laws of this earth not to be in charge. Many of you don't know I want to be in charge. It's too tedious. It's too, it's too, it's too tedious. It's too, it's too, oh my gosh. How can I sit and just be doing this paperwork and be doing this and starting this? And you see most of these foreigners, many of them can't even... They don't even know how to put their money in the bank and they find somebody to do it for them. That's why many of them marry American, they marry Canadian, marry European, so that they can do the things that have to do with the system. Those guys, many of them have never gone to school. And yet they own businesses and they are making money. Seriously. There's a family... Uh, a, a family from, uh, I think they are from the, they are from the Middle East. They own a gas station. They don't even know that. To to if you wanna own a weapon, in case a customer attack you, that you should go and get a gun. He trained how to shoot a gun. The husband went and bought a small axe, the axe that you use in chopping down a tree and put under the counter. Seriously. The wife was walking in the in the store, ringing up people when somebody, somebody brought a, a gun and put on her face, bring out all the money. The woman said, okay. So she put the key, tried to do like she's, and she brought out this big ax, swung it at this guy, almost chopped off that guy's head. The guy ducked and fled and dropped the gun and ran away. I mean, this, these people are still crude and barbaric. Those who do not really know much about civilization, and yet they are owning gas station, owning, many of them will establish a clinic, get a doctor to work for them there, and so on. They don't even know how to, how to, how to type one word in the computer. They don't. Yet they are wealthy. Why? Because they know what God said. You were created to rule. You were not created to follow. In rare cases, you follow because you are connected to that person's dream and tied to that person's destiny. Okay, that's a different thing. I am born to rule, not to lead. I'm not a leader, I'm a ruler. And that's why my job is to create leaders. Only rulers can make leaders. Leaders cannot make rulers. 
leaders come and go, rulers come to stay. When leaders die, their dream dies. When rulers leave, rulers do not die. They simply, they are rescheduled, reassigned. And that is why their influence and their dreams do not die. They continue forever. For example, Jesus wasn't a leader. He was a ruler. God said to Abraham, I have made a covenant with you because you obey. When I tell you something, you run to go and do it. And what was the sign of it? Circumcision. Circumcision. And for us today, it's still circumcision. But instead of it just being circumcision in our physical flesh, I mean, it is both. It is both. For those who still want to keep the circumcision of their flesh, there's no problem about it. But most of all, there is another token of it, another sign of the covenant between us and God, Jesus. The empty tomb, the tree of death we call the cross. You, you need to know about this. What is the token, what is the sign that shows that there is a covenant between you and God? You see, wherever I live, I have a chalice. Let me show you what I got here. I always have something like this. This particular chalice uh, is the one I use uh, for married couples. There is another one that is used for general practice. Something that reminds me, see the cup, the pattern and the cup is a sign in Christianity. It is a sign It's a sign that Jesus is alive. It represents his body and his blood. His body for healing, his blood for deliverance. That's the sign of the new covenant. That's what it is right there. This is the sign of the crucifixion and the resurrection. It stands for the fact that God is a God of the living, not God of the dead. And his name, the name of that God is Jesus. Hallelujah. You must have something in your home that represent, you must have something in your home that represent a covenant between you and God. What is it? The other things that you can put in your home that will represent that. I have no idea how many of you have my picture in your home that reminds you to pray. How many of you have my picture in your home that reminds you of holiness, that reminds you of the power of God, that reminds you of prosperity, that reminds you of protection and promotion of God. I cannot, I, I cannot wait for Vida to, 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 to release a new picture that has pray for prosperity, for protection, pray for prosperity, protection, and promotion. I can't wait for her to release that. I hope Vida, you are watching this. 
I'm going to send you several pictures for you to choose one of them and do something with it. The circumcision of the heart is a token of the covenant. It's a place you're going to reach that God is going to know that you really mean business and there will be a circumcision of the, of the spirit and of the mind too. These are all the different signs that shows that there is a covenant. Among the Jewish people, the Ten Commandments becomes the covenant. And to really show you that God was, because wherever the covenant is in operation, God is, God is active in that place. God, God will become present. His presence will become, will become very activated. They, they, they had the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies. You want to meet with God, you, you, you go to the temple because God is there in the Holy of Holies. His presence is there. There must be somewhere in your house, there must be something in your home that you have called me to consecrate for you that activate the presence of God in your life. It might be my picture, might be a cross, might be a communion chalice and pattern, it might be a Bible. Because the Bible is the, the highest form of God speaking. It's, it's God speaking. The Bible is God in action, God speaking. It is Jesus mostly in action. The Holy Ghost mostly in action. And angels at work. God wants to to, to, to to demonstrate to you that His covenant with you is for real. And since specific Situations require specific revelation. Berlin, did you write that thing down for me? Specific situation requires specific revelations. Yes, Bishop. Okay. Yes, the day. Yes. Okay. Since that be the case, it's possible that the sign of the covenant between you and God is going to be different from all these things that, are, that we have mentioned today. For example, I carry with me a $100 bill. One particular $100 bill that I never spent stays with me. As long as I have that money with me, I will never lack money. Why? Because I receive a revelation about that. It's going to be different things based on different needs. I've seen people send me money for me to consecrate and send back to them and I did that and they never lack money. As long as they have that money in their home, or as long as they have that money, that particular money with them all the time, the favor of money comes to them. So you should think about doing something like that. So specific situation going to require specific revelations. Everything is not always the same because God did it for that person. It's going to be the same. No. There are for some people it's going to be a key or a chain or something. I am asking the almighty God based on your situation to reveal a rev to give us a revelation as to what is to be the token the sign of the contract of the covenant between you and God in your home and in your life i ask this in the name of jesus 
that the covenant between you and God be activated forever and ever. Amen and amen and amen. All right. I'll see you tonight at amen. 9. Amen. I, yeah. I'll see you tonight at 9 p.m. And uh, tonight is going to be awesome. God bless you and keep you. This is the Archbishop Idikai Mary, your servant, your prophet. Bye bye. Yes, it is.